Then my boss stormed the venue. What a dreadful meeting. With what I pay you, Emma, you could have at least bought a decent wreath of flowers. What are you doing here? What does it look like? Mourning a dead man I don't even know? It's obvious that I've come to fetch you to return to your job. We have a lot to do, and you can't afford to have more days off. I've indulged you too much, and you owe me. Huh, I owe you nothing, and this is a funeral. It's best if you leave. No, I'm not moving from here until you accompany me. And they can't kick me out because this is a public event, and I have the right to be here as long as I please. You are my employee, and you have to obey me. Hey, you are disturbing this funeral. Can you leave now, please? Just shut up and focus on your Bible. One could say I've always been fortunate when it comes to work because not long after finishing college, I quickly found my dream job at a digital marketing company. The company was a multinational, known in multiple countries around the world as one of the top 10 in its field. So I had high hopes for it to progress. And yes, at first everything seemed perfect. The work was enjoyable, I learned a lot from the more experienced employees, and the salary was above the average for someone relatively new like me. Everything was fine in my opinion, except for the boss. What are you waiting for? You have a project to deliver at 12 sharp and you're still here lazing around. If I don't see you back at your desks within 30 seconds, I'll deduct the time lost from your salary and you'll have to make up those hours outside of your schedule. But sir, we're on our break and the project is almost finished. We just need to review it and deliver it. Do you think that's going to happen on its own? Get to it right now. We're losing clients because of your foolishness, and I wouldn't want to have to replace you for such a minuscule mistake. I know you're not very bright, but I think even you can understand this. The boss had not a shred of consideration for others. He didn't treat us like his employees, but like slaves of the company who were lucky that he even spoke to them. It wasn't allowed to contradict him, not even when it was obvious that he was wrong. He demanded that we do a multitude of tasks that didn't necessarily belong to us and unpaid overtime. If you behaved well and overloaded yourself with work, doing it as best as possible, he wouldn't say anything. If for any reason your performance deteriorated, he would make sure to reproach you for it for weeks. Shouting was often heard in the office because the boss took it out on someone different every day to vent his anger. And it was very common for a colleague to take sick leave due to stress or resign every week. He's done it again. When are they going to replace him? Is that even possible? The boss comes from a wealthy family. They've been in this business for decades. They don't own the entire company, but it's almost as if they do. Still, someone should report him. Good luck with that. Despite not liking the boss, no one dared to contradict him. They didn't want to lose a job that was so hard to come by, and rightly so, since the threat of speaking ill of the deserters, as the boss called them, to potential new companies, so they wouldn't hear them again in that city was also there. In the years I spent at this company working for him, I discovered that the best strategy for my mental health was to obey as much as possible and ignore any attempts to engage in conflict. If the boss felt I deserved a scolding for something, I took it with fortitude, without letting myself get riled up. Perhaps this could be considered a somewhat cowardly attitude, given the severity of the treatment received from my superior, but my ambition was high, and I knew that the only way to thrive in the company was to endure whatever the boss threw at me. It was indeed how I eventually landed in the position of head of the sales department. I wasn't second in command at that company, but I had quite a bit of responsibility compared to when I started. Everything seemed to be going fairly well, all things considered, until I received the call. I need to take a couple of days off. I'm afraid I have to attend a funeral. How inconvenient. Can it wait? After all, the person is already dead, focus on your life. Tomorrow, we have an important meeting with a client, and if we want our products to be exported to Asia, we'd better not disappoint. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to be there. My father passed away a few hours ago, and I need the time to be with my family. I've already spoken to human resources to proceed with the paperwork. Well, if that's the gratitude I receive for advancing your career, fine. Go to the darn funeral. Anyway, nobody here is indispensable. The boss seemed angry, like a child denied a candy, but I didn't care. I knew those days off were owed to me by law. And besides, at that moment, I was so blinded by anger and the pain of loss that I completely abandoned my passive attitude. And I no longer cared if I said something slightly inappropriate that would anger him. I thought he would reluctantly give in because he had no other choice. And then when I returned to my office on Monday, 
he would give me the scolding of the century. I thought that during those days when I was absent, he would leave me alone and wouldn't even call me. But how wrong I was? The day after I left work, I started receiving multiple calls and text messages from my boss, demanding that I return to my job immediately. I responded to the first message by repeating that I was on leave, please do not contact me anymore, and we would talk when I returned. But the harassment continued as if nothing had happened, to the point where I had to turn off my phone. My father's funeral was a very emotional experience for me, as I had always had a very close relationship with him, and although his death was expected due to his illness, his passing was still a hard shock that I was barely beginning to accept. I felt surrounded by my family, safe in that funeral home for a few hours. A priest had come to give a small mass in honor of my father before we headed to the cemetery, and all the relatives had gathered in front of the coffin. Then my boss stormed the venue. What a dreadful meeting. With what I pay you, Emma, you could have at least bought a decent wreath of flowers. What are you doing here? What does it look like? Mourning a dead man I don't even know? It's obvious that I've come to fetch you to return to your job. We have a lot to do, and you can't afford to have more days off. I've indulged you too much, and you owe me. Huh, I owe you nothing, and this is a funeral. It's best if you leave. No, I'm not moving from here until you accompany me. And they can't kick me out because this is a public event, and I have the right to be here as long as I please. You are my employee, and you have to obey me. Hey, you are disturbing this funeral. Can you leave now, please? Just shut up and focus on your Bible. Not only did he stand there in the middle of the room, immovable, but he also continued to make obscene comments in front of my entire family about me and my supposed lack of manners for refusing to comply with his demands. There was a point where he even dared to spit on my father's coffin, calling the attendees to the service deadbeats and repeating over and over that I associated with nothing but worthless riffraff. Several people, including the priest, politely asked my boss to leave because I wasn't going to leave the funeral home. But he flatly refused and kept bothering, even going so far as to threaten violence against anyone who tried to remove him. In the end, the police had to come to remove him from the premises, and a big commotion ensued. My boss reacted violently, first insulting and trying to flee from the officers, then engaging in fisticuffs with anyone who tried to approach him. After 10 minutes of chaos, the police managed to apprehend him and took him to the police station, where he would spend some time locked up for assault, resisting arrest, and disturbing public order. It was uncomfortable for everyone, but at least the funeral could finally continue peacefully as planned. I thought that would be the end of it, not wanting to think more about what happened to my boss, and focused as I was on my mourning. But a few hours later, I realized I was wrong. Hey, have you seen this video? Your boss is in it, and it seems to have gone viral on TikTok. It can't be, let me see. Look at the comments. People are canceling him, saying all sorts of nasty things, and rightfully so. Apparently, someone present at my father's funeral had taken out their cell phone and started recording when my boss interrupted the ceremony, and the disturbances began. Therefore, the video showed an accurate portrayal of all the despicable attitudes of the aforementioned, from the lack of respect in front of a deceased person's coffin to how violent his arrest later became. Internet users were as, or even more outraged than my own family, to the point where the video was massively shared, accumulating millions of views and eventually making its way to public television, where my boss was announced as a crazy criminal who must have a hobby of crashing into such solemn ceremonies. By the time I returned to work on Monday, my boss was still in jail. The charges didn't seem likely to be dismissed anytime soon. Emma, considering the absolutely inappropriate behavior of your boss, would you be interested in taking his position? How so? Even if the charges were dropped or it didn't go to trial, in this company, we're not interested in having someone so problematic in a position of authority. We're going to fire him anyway, and his position will be vacant. So if you're interested, we'd be delighted to have you. After everything that happened, I didn't feel guilty about accepting, thus becoming the CEO of the company practically overnight. I visited my former boss in jail a few days later to make sure of how he was doing and somehow convince myself that karma had been playing in my favor. I never planned to drop the charges, but my ego demanded an apology and also to make my former boss see how far he had come by behaving as he did. I didn't do anything wrong, just demanded what was rightfully mine, that my employees fulfill their schedule. I don't owe any apology. 
My ex-boss's stubbornness never faded, and with it, his misfortune also followed. When I told him I was the new CEO, he got angry and started cursing the board chairman, saying they betrayed him, but I just laughed. At the end, not only did he end up serving a sentence of over a year, but the social media cancellation continued as well. My former boss was fired, no company wanted to hire him again, and he lost money trying to hire the best lawyers to get him out of trouble. Unfortunately for him, when he was freed, it wasn't going to be so easy to escape social disgrace. Realizing the kind of person he was, his wife filed for divorce, denying him the right to see their daughter again. My former boss became a meme and eventually had to move to another country to start over. The last I heard of him was that he was working in a small fast food company in a city that didn't even show up on maps because even with his money and contacts, he couldn't recover. I, on the other hand, finally took my desired position as CEO and never again had to deal with superiors like my former boss at work. What do you think about my ex-boss? Did he get what he deserved?